about their side and bad news about the other side in the waning days of this election. Uh, but as you said, Carol, uh, sources at C for talking to CNN, NBC, ABC, other news outlets all say that Brett Baer's claim that indictments are likely was just completely unfounded. He was relying on anonymous sources who seemed to have an agenda. But what happened after his report on Wednesday? Well, well, take a look at what Donald Trump said about it on the campaign trail. It was reported last night that the FBI is conducting a criminal investigation into Hillary Clinton's pay-for-play corruption during her tenure as Secretary of State. In other words, the FBI is investigating how Hillary Clinton put the office of Secretary of State up for sale in violation of federal law. The FBI agents say their investigation is likely to yield an indictment. Likely to yield an indictment is the claim there from Trump at the end. There were several questionable statements uh, in, in those comments from Trump that seemed to be provoked by the Fox News reporting. But to be clear, Fox is not entirely off base here. Yes, there is a, a, a divide inside the FBI. There is an active inquiry into the Clinton Foundation. Numerous field offices looking into the activities of the foundation. Some agents seem to believe there were serious improprieties that should be investigated further. But as of right now, there's nothing imminent, uh, no serious legal jeopardy for Clinton at this moment. So Trump clearly took it too far, and he took it too far based on Fox's reporting. Uh, I think what's interesting about this, Carol, is you see how conservative blogs and websites have taken this and run with it. Uh, it is, in a way, wish fulfillment. And this happens to lots of folks well, on all sides from, in the final days of the election. From what they consider election. a trusted source, I think it's important to point out that right. Brett Baer said he didn't say it artfully, and he walked it back. He did walk it back. On Thursday, he walked it back, uh, said that uh, the way he was describing what his sources were telling them was not quite right. Uh, and so credit to him for acknowledging that. Uh, however, sort of too late. You know, uh, lies spread so much more widely than the truth spreads. And so now the Clinton campaign is on the offense saying the FBI needs to come out with a public statement about this, uh, refuting what they say is a baseless Fox News report. We've also heard from Clinton allies just this hour calling for an investigation of the FBI over all these leaks. Because that's really what's incredible about this, Carol. We're seeing uh, numerous sources in and around the FBI seeming to leak information about Clinton about ongoing inquiries about Clinton. It is a very unusual situation. Uh, <laughs> this is a very unusual election, don't you <laughs> yes. think? <laughs> yes. I mean, my recurring nightmares will just be stuck on four days till the election, and I'll keep, it'll be like Groundhog Day, and I'll keep waking up, and it'll never be over. <laughs> I'm just joking. Brian oh, Stilster, boy. thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. I'm Carol Costello at this hour with Bourbon and Baldwin after a break. John Berman, this just in, a bold new prediction just four days out. Someone is going to win this election. I felt for it. That much is clear. Beyond that, though, well, uh, things are a little murky. What we can tell you is this. It is very close. The new CNN poll of polls shows Hillary Clinton with the lead right now of four points. That is pretty close. Has it ever been closer? Funny you should ask. Four days out in 2012, it was a dead heat. But as you know, this election will not be decided by a national poll. Instead, it will be the race to 270 electoral votes. That is what the candidates are working so hard on today. And that is where the new drama is setting in. Let's bring in right now David Cena's political director, David Chalian, who has all of the answers. David, we know Hillary Clinton's path, Donald Trump's path to, to do 70, very different. How narrow is it for Donald Trump right now? It's still pretty narrow. Remember, you just compared that 2012 race to today, and Barack Obama still had a pretty big victory, even though it was closer at, at this point right now. So that's probably good news for Hillary Clinton. So too is the map. Take a look at our current state of the battleground play. Remember, if Donald Trump were to win each of the remaining battleground states. Let's give him Florida and North Carolina and Ohio. Still not enough. He still has to find somewhere else to go. Maybe New Hampshire, where the polls have been tied in the last day or so. That gets him to 269. And then he would have to get this congressional district up here in the north of Maine to get him that extra electoral vote and get him to 270. This is sort of the no room for error map uh, for Donald Trump. All right. There you have it. David Challey in there. What about Hillary Clinton? Do you have anything on Hillary for us? Well, listen, Hillary's uh, entire mission, John, is to save the blue wall. But let me show you a different Trump path and where he's looking to break through that blue wall 
it is right up here in the Rust Belt. This is what the Trump campaign from the very beginning told us that they were interested in doing and changing the map. Watch what happens here. Here, I don't have to give Donald Trump every battleground state. Let's say mm -hmm. uh, he hangs on to Utah and Arizona. Let's say he wins Florida and Ohio. But let's give Hillary Clinton North Carolina and Nevada. Obviously, she would be a 293. She would have won this election. But now, Donald Trump goes hunting through this Rust Belt. If he could flip Michigan and Wisconsin, he's a 270. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. If he could get two of those three, he doesn't need all the battlegrounds. That would get him there. The problem, guys, right now, that blue wall is still holding. The polls have Hillary Clinton out front in Michigan, out front in Wisconsin, out front in Pennsylvania. That's blocking Donald Trump's sort of Rust Belt path to the presidency. And, of course, Donald Trump going there and elsewhere. He's going everywhere uh, in the so next few days. interesting when you look at their travel yeah, schedules. Before then. Election. Exactly. David Chalian, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So this morning, we're getting our final look at how the economy is doing before the election. The latest jobs report out this morning showing 161,000 jobs were added in October, and the unemployment rate dipped to 4.9 percent. But the Trump campaign has summed it up in one word from their perspective, Disastrous. All right, CNN Money correspondent Allison Kosick joins us now to break down the numbers. Allison, what do you see in these numbers? Um, I'm thinking that I'm going to be hard pressed to characterize this jobs report as disastrous, but I'll get to that in just a bit. Let me go deeper behind the numbers and kind of reiterate what you just said. Uh, that 161,000 jobs added to the economy, that's actually a little bit of, of a miss, but not a big deal because when you look at the real headline from this jobs report, where it was up around 9, 10 percent, so you see the unemployment rate falling. One thing he is right about though in his release that he put out after the jobs report is what's known as the labor parti labor force participation rate and that is where uh, it includes Americans looking for jobs or people in the workforce that is actually at historic lows he is right about that these are at levels we haven't seen since the 1970s and even economists are admitting there's something structurally uh, there's something structurally going on here. They're not exactly sure what it is. And he's saying that 14 million people have left the workforce since uh, since President Obama has been in office. Uh, but a portion of that has just been sort of natural. You've got retirees, you've got students, you've got stay-at-home moms. That segment of the population is not looking for work, so he's not entirely accurate on that. Kate and John? All right, Allison, thank you so much for breaking it down for us. We appreciate it. So how does this all play out with four days to go? Let's bring in right now Mark Penn. He's a Democratic pollster and former advisor to President Clinton and Hillary Clinton. And Alex Conant, former communications director for Marco Rubio's presidential campaign, now a partner at Firehouse Strategies. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. Alex, we'll get to who's up, who's down in just one second. But as Allison was laying out kind of this news jobs report, I want to get your take. Four days out, who does this help? Do voters pay attention to this four days out? Well, there's been a big disconnect throughout the election between the economic statistics we see coming out of government agencies in Washington, D.C., and how voters actually feel about the economy. Even though the yep. economy has been steadily improving, voters continue to feel like they're not, their personal lives are not necessarily improving. They don't feel economic security at home. That is the core of Trump's message. Mm -hmm. I would think if, in fact, I think if he had talked about that more over the last six months, he'd be doing better in the polls than he is right now. But he's closing on that argument, and that's strong for him. Yeah, you can't tell people how. How they feel. People feel how they exactly. feel. Numbers right. don't necessarily change that. Mark Penn, let's talk about where we are in this race right now. We saw the CNN poll. Polls has it at about a four-point margin. The electoral map may be even a little closer than that. What do you think Hillary Clinton needs to do in the next three days to seal this deal? Well, right now, I think she's just got to stick to her issues. I think I think we've seen Trump momentum kind of stall out here. I think most of the polls now have moved to, to a three- or four-point uh, gap in her favor. So she needs to stay the course, stay away from difficult issues. The economic news today is, is uh, really on the good side rather than the bad side with 4.9 percent unemployment. It's not going to shake up the race. I think right now she's going to kind of get the vote out because I think the big difference has been that her voters haven't been as energized. I think Obama is out there energizing voters. I think you're beginning to see uh, more of the mail-in ballots come in in the Democratic direction as a result of those efforts in the last few days. Trump momentum has a different ring than Marco momentum that we talked about so much <laughs> in the primary. Right. We're so sorry. <laughs> I had to get it in before yeah, time. Thanks. Just an opportunity thanks. that we had to talk about. Um, alternatively, what does Trump need to do, do you think, in the next few days? 
to win? Well, first of all, he needs to avoid making any gaps. I mean, the last week of the campaign has arguably been the best week of the campaign for him, in part because he's just shut up. Like, he has not dominated the news cycles like he did in August, September, and, and early October when his polls were plummeting. Yeah, even to the point of reading, as you put it, his own stage direction. Keep it <laughs> right. cool, Keep it Donald. Cool. <laughs> and if he keeps doing that, his polls are headed in the right direction. They're going to continue to head in the right direction. He is finishing very, very strongly. I don't know if it's going to be enough for him in part because right. of the Electoral College challenge that David just, just pointed out in the, in the previous segment, but it really helps center races down Bell. Mm -hmm. Places like Florida, where we are seeing Marco Mena. Marco <laughs> Rubio is well ahead in Florida. Other states like Wisconsin, where Ron Johnson is finishing very, very strongly. It's exciting for Republicans who are really focused on keeping this. Uh, I, I will say on the issue of momentum, it isn't exactly clear now who has it, because if you look at the ABC News Washington Post tracking poll against just one poll, you know, she has gone up every day for the right. last four days. So it may be... After the FBI. After the FBI. Stuff, yeah. Maybe that she has a little bit of wind at her back. We need to wait and see as that moves on. Mark, I want to talk about where Hillary Clinton uh, is headed because, look, you know, today she's in Pennsylvania uh, and also Ohio. You know, she's not in Florida. She's not in North Carolina. She's not in Arizona. You know, she's playing a little bit of defense. She ends up going to New Hampshire uh, in the next few days, right. closes the campaign in, in Philadelphia. As you look at this travel schedule, what makes you nervous about it? Well, look, I, I, I think this travel schedule says, as we saw in the, uh, the electoral map, she's, she's got a, a, a pretty close to a lock on 272, and there's 87 votes up for grabs. No reason to take a lot of risk at this point. I think the, the goal is to prevent any kind of surprise upset by Trump in, in some of the Rust Belt states where his message has oftentimes resonated the most. And I think having a conservative defensive strategy, at least for, for this part of the weekend, makes to me a lot of sense, particularly when Trump was gaining momentum. And, and, I, and I think that now she has blocked that momentum and it's peaked out. Yeah, but when you look at kind of the sheer number of places that they're going, I mean, you've got a, the announced schedule, but you also got folks talking about, Mark, that Trump is doing 10 states in three days, and that's, you know, Friday to Sunday. It's, as far as we know, she isn't. I mean, do you fear that he's out working her right now, Mark? Uh, well, he has been, you know, pretty aggressive in terms of his belief yeah. that he can change it on rallies. Look, I, I, I've, I've been on the plane during those last few days in a presidential race, and, you know, you can even make last-minute decisions. I think if the polls stay as it is, she's, she's in the, the right strategy. If they tighten it all, I suspect they'll add some more, some more stops. I think you have to be reactive. Uh, she wants to be, uh, not make mistakes at this point bring this election home, bring her voters home. Remember, she's also got a network of surrogates that Trump really doesn't have. You've got, mm -hmm. you've got President yeah. Clinton out there. You've got President Obama out there. So I think her effort is really multiplied in a way that Trump's is not. So, Alex, you're working, you have campaigns in two states that are actually big in this election, you know, Florida and Wisconsin. A lot of people have talked about the Clinton ground game and the fact that she has one. And look, that Donald Trump yeah. really doesn't. What's your assessment of the difference in the quality of the ground games of each campaign and how much of a difference it will make? Well, you're right. I mean, Hillary Clinton does have a bigger ground game. But the Republicans, they're not not—they're not taking nothing for granted. In both those states, both Florida and Wisconsin, you've seen this, the Senate campaigns and the state parties build big, massive get-out-the-vote efforts. Marco Rubio's campaign is making something like half a million voter contacts per day. But does in she the have final a ground game advantage? You think honestly? Do you think she has a ground game advantage? I think she's probably better organized. She certainly has had more resources to spend on organizing a ground game, and then she has obviously the the unions that are helping her out as well. But Donald Trump, you know, he won the primaries without much of a ground game, and he's really benefiting, I think, from some of these Senate candidates who are turning out Republicans in places like Florida. Alex, after. Um Comey's announcement, the FBI announcement on Friday. I mean, as John was pointing out, there is some, there is some evidence. You got to see some, some more polling that she could be seeing some wind at her back. And, and when you look at the ABC poll specifically, if Clinton generally isn't cratering after that announcement, which was a bombshell, is Trump finished? Well, she had a big lead going into it. I don't think Trump is finished. I think Trump has real challenges, especially with the Electoral College. But it, here's my concern as a Republican. As an yeah. American, if Hillary Clinton is elected president, she will have no political capital. She's going to be under investigation from the moment she is sworn in. Not investigation by Congress, investigation by the FBI from the moment that she is sworn in. That is bad for the United States to have a president who is that politically weak. I, look, I don't care if her domestic agenda is crippled. 
But it does worry me if on does the international stage if they we have, an Ameri- we have a president capital? who cannot rally the American people. What's that? Does either candidate, if they win, have any political capital? I mean, I mean I think if Donald, if Donald like... Trump wins, I think it's a historic achievement, and I think he will have tons of political capital to Mark work ben? with, and a Republican Congress. Mark Ben, just quickly, you know, we've seen some Friday bombshells, whether it be James <laughs> Comey or Access Hollywood. You know, it's, it's 11, it's 13 a.m. right now. Do you think we'll get to sundown without anything happening? Uh, I think this is now likely to be a quiet uh, Friday. Of course, uh, that's a dangerous prediction in, the, in this race. But I, I think, I think as he said, you know, Trump has, quote, real challenges, which is a, a euphemism for meaning Trump needs something to put him over the finish line. And if he, if he doesn't have it, he's not getting there. And, and I don't see it. Great okay. to see you guys. Alex, yeah, thanks a lot. A lot Thank of good you. insight here. Really appreciate it. All right. We're talking about Donald Trump. Some people saying he was staying on script until... Until maybe he did <laughs> Donald Trump suggesting that America's troops don't want to see her as their boss. So what exactly did he mean by that? Plus, the Trump campaign now taking on cyberbullying. The Internet had a few things to say about that. We'll be right back. On the next Parts Unknown. Any excuse to come to Japan is a good one. The greatest sushi chef in America takes to And here, those comments from this man, it is very clear. There are no ifs, ands, or buts. He's talking about a woman cannot be commander-in-chief. Scotty, I mean, has where well, has I, he earned the benefit of the well, doubt? Well, I, I must pin out my ears because I actually, I don't see it being as clear as, as Crystal might. And in fact, uh, right now, the military favors Donald Trump, three to one active duty servicemen, and including women, 50 to 75 percent of women, according to different surveys, say that they actually support Donald Trump to be the next commander in chief over Hillary Clinton. So that he's just going along with the traditional, but uh, Republicans have usually been able to encourage the military vote and recruit that vote anyways. So it just goes along with those traditional lines. I think that's what they're mm-hmm. talking about. And in the recent life, of the email scandals that have come out with possible national security jeopardized and the idea of Benghazi and no man, leaving a man behind, you can see why the military right now is a little bit hesitant about Hillary Clinton and her background and her policy. It's a political Rorschach test, like, like, like a lot of things he says, People, different people seeing it uh, in different ways. Hillary Clinton today we know is going to go to Pittsburgh, uh, and we're told she's going to focus on Donald Trump's past comments mm-hmm. about women. Um, this is something that she has talked about a lot. This is something that other people on the trail talk about a lot, including President Obama. Uh, let's listen quickly to that. If you disrespected women before you were in office, you will disrespect women as president. So, Crystal, again, this is a consistent argument, but this is still, we're, you know, we're four days out. Right. And this is all about him. Yeah. You know, it's not about her. I am using the pronouns now. Um, <laughs> I, it, it, this is all about Donald Trump. It's not about Hillary Clinton. Is there a risk to not talking about yourself and really just trying to talk about the other person? Well, I don't think they're exclusively talking about him, but let's be clear. This is a man who stood on stage at the RNC and said, I alone can fix the problems. He has wanted this election to be about him, to be a personality contest in which he can be the strong man who can come in and fix everything. We don't need to know the details. We don't need to know about his plan to fix ISIS because the power of his personality and will is what's going to make America great again. So I think it's entirely appropriate for the president and Hillary Clinton and her campaign to be saying, okay, then let's look at who this man actually is, and not just the campaign rhetoric, but who he's demonstrated himself to be over the course of his 70 years on the planet. And when you look at the numbers, women are going to be the key to who wins this election. Men are, by and large, voting the way that men do. They tend to favor Republicans. That looks Men do what they do. There they you do go. what they do, there, John. That's kind but of women, <laughs> women have treated this election a little bit differently because of the comments and the behavior that they've seen from Donald Trump. So but, it makes sense. But I think if you really want to respect women, we're four days out. I think you're right. Let's be positive. Let's talk about our candidates. You know, earlier this morning we were told to separate. Tell me why your candidate is better and exclude the name of the opposition. I think right That's now... That's a little too if I have. But we have fought. We have gone back and forth for months now about these candidates, how they differ. Right now we are need to know the specifics, how these but candidates are presenting just, their plans, and we have that. Let's I just can be real, and, and I want to say this from a nonpartisan place. If you are a Trump supporter, you think Hillary Clinton belongs in jail. Do you care not much, of, do you not, not care much about do. her policy if you think she belongs in jail? If you are a Hillary Clinton supporter like myself, you think Donald Trump is a serial sexual predator based on the dozen women who have come out and said that. 
I don't care about your plan for the economy. I don't want a serial sexual predator in the White House. So we can't even get to policy when you can't get past I mean, those whole, kind of characteristics. That's just the reality. Light. I mean, I think this I mean, has been issues so light and unfortunate, but that's Let's the reality. Let's let President Obama talk about policies. Let's actually talk about why he believes in Hillary Clinton continuing his agenda or not going you know, to continue cyberbullying is an issue. It is Absolutely. an issue. And Indeed. Melania Trump brought it up yesterday. Great segue. Her first solo. <laughs> John Berman is the king of segways. <laughs> The fir her first solo event on the campaign trail, she talked about family, she talked about Donald Trump, she talked about her story, and she talked about the issues she would like to take on if she were first lady. Listen. Our culture has gotten too mean and too rough, especially to children and teenagers. We have to find a better way to talk to each other, to disagree with each other, to respect each other. We must find better ways to honor and support the basic goodness of our children, especially in social media. Where it is very clear that people are going to say, have you spoken to your husband about this? How creating that kind of a story four days after the election is helpful for this campaign? Well, listen, Melania Trump did not ask to be in this campaign. She did not marry him thinking he was going to run for president one day. I think this woman has done an amazing job uh, speaking right. a different language to a room full of people and talking about an issue that is near and dear for her. So it's never the wrong, it's never the wrong time to do the right thing. And that is what I think she's presenting. This is an issue that speaks very well to women, to families, and then we're all dealing with. So why is it wrong that we put the spotlight on it? And I think what we've seen the last 24 hours since her speech, people actually bullying her because she's sticking up against bullies. I think this is the wrong approach to I think we need to actually take a step back and take the partisanship off and actually say, you know what, this is a good conversation, glad we're talking Chris, about Chris, the quick it. button, I mean, yes, it may be an ironic message, but there's nothing wrong with the message itself. Sure, it's just hard to imagine that... I just, is she trolling us? I mean, it's see, so just bizarre. See, you just encourage her being bullied. It's just see, so you're bizarre a bully. to see her saying, we need to focus on compassion and kindness and charity when her husband is the exact antithesis of all these values. I mean, I don't even know what to say, but I think she is either trolling all of us or trolling her husband or something like that because it's, it's insane. It's the reason that this election has made us all feel a little crazy because of things like this. Four more days of crazy. <laughs> Crystal Scotty, thanks so much. Hey, you really can't break crazy. It. You can't. That's a good point. That's, That's right, go. Scotty. You had to get that last line. That's right, Scotty. <laughs> Programming you note. You may have heard there is an election this Tuesday. Our team of correspondents, reporters, camera operators, sound men, analysts, anchors, we are